Welcome, this presentation summarizes preliminary results from MedDrive studies. It was presented at the 2013 ICADS meeting in Brisbane. Langford and Al have shown that um, age is related to an increased risk of um, uh, fatality within drivers. They've adjusted for the distance run. What's very interesting is um, they've actually made two different uh, outcomes. One of the drivers dying themselves and the other is of killing a driver or an occupant of another car. What we can see these risks are very similar from 17 to 69 years old. However, from 79 years upwards, we can see that the risk is increased for the drivers themselves. This is due to their increased vulnerability um, to lesions and the increased risk of dying from these. This phenomenon is even increased from 80 years and up. However, what we can see is that there is a slight increase in risk of killing others. There are numerous explanations from this, but one of the major ones would be that aged drivers have a cognitive decline that actually slows them down in their reaction time and makes, makes it more difficult for them to react to complex situations. This has been shown by Shay, Shay and Al um, in the Seattle Longitudinal Study where people have been followed up since the 60s and where we can see that with age the functions actually decline. This also concerns spatial orientation and perceptual speed which are two functions that are very important for driving. Matthias and Lucas have done a systematic reviews to study well what type of neuropsychological test could we use to actually detect um, unfitness to drive. What they did is um, test and see whether these had any predictive effect on driving performance. This was uh, regarding driving difficulties, so accidents, on-road tests and on simulator driving. And the only test that really came out uh, in the top five for all three outcome was the UFOV. This is the useful field of um, view. Test developed in the 90s um, by Ball and Al and which uh, is, is now promoted by Edwards with slight modifications. And this test is a computerized test and is focused on perception and also on selective and divided attention. So this test seemed quite interesting for uh, screening in senior drivers and could be useful in primary care settings. However, it only runs on Windows XP and uh, requires a dedicated computer for its use, which is sometimes difficult in those settings. Furthermore, it only tests um, specific uh, functions related to attention, whereas other functions are also required for driving. So, what w we were thinking of and what seems to be required by physicians is actually a battery of tests that they could uh, use to test um, in clinical situation and answer the trivial qu question of can my patient drive? Uh, this is for senior drivers, polymedication, or uh, psychiatric conditions. This, this is why we developed MedDrive. Um, studying the literature and, lo and looking what has been done in neuroscience in the, in the past 10 years, we focused on four different uh, functions. This is visual processing, executive function, spatial memory, and attention. To develop the task, we actually tested it on 104 senior drivers. Uh, these drivers gave us important input to develop the instructions and also modify the tasks to make them as optimal as possible. And here they are. So these four tasks, well there's a visual recognition task which tests central uh, visual perception and peripheral visual perception. We also are testing dual tasking. The second task is the central cue attention task. This measures simple response time, but also alerting gain and orientation gain. The third task is the movement detection task. This actually measures um, time to reaction to movement, but also attention shift. The last task is the working memory task, where we're actually uh, measuring spatial uh, resolution and also spatial decay with uh, increased complexity of the task. And these four tasks more or less test all the functions that are really required uh, when driving, mainly for senior drivers. So, what is it with the results? Well, first of all, we wanted to test and see if results were consistent um, when they were measured more than once. So to do this, we had 20 um, uh, young drivers. The data from 17 were 
available um, who actually did the test five times uh, within about one week. Uh, one, uh, and what we can see is that we have quite reasonable results that make it um, uh, uh, reliable, even though <clears throat> the decay coefficient was very low. This is quite easy to explain. These people were quite young and they had no reasons to have decay and therefore um, th their results were not at all dependent of the difficulty of the tasks and therefore it was impossible to measure uh, any form of reliability. You can also see that the ICCs actually range from 0.42 to 0.89. Uh, the 042 concerned the central processing time, which is a very important indicator as it's the test that's most related to the UFOV. So why is it so low? Well, we have some explanations. First of all, well, the populations um, were in an age range that was quite close and they were all healthy. So as we can see, <coughs> the standard deviation um, of our measures were very low. This, this means that people were very alike one from another, making it difficult to distinguish them. Uh, one from another. The other reason is that actually the test had a learning effect. Um, so measurements were slow at the start and they actually started increasing with time. So this pr um, um, caused a variation uh, within subjects that was more important than the one that we observed between subjects. To compare, the, um, uh, the UFOV has an ICC of 0 0.6 about, but they did this on a, a wide broader range of age and they tested people from 50 to over 80. So we believe if we had this type of population, we would have an ICC that would go way higher than what it is now. Another thing is that we have to see that our test actually responds uh, when we are providing a substance that we know that has effects on driving. The best substance to use is uh, actually ethanol or alcohol. Um, so we took 20 young adults uh, in a uh, randomized uh, trial. Um, where each individual was random, randomly provided either no alcohol, 0 0.5, 0 0.65 or 0 0.8 uh, BAC. And here are the results. Um, what we can see is that our instrument actually responds to even low BAC from 0 0.5. Each of our outcome measurements had a significant um, response to alcohol except for two, which was alerting gain and the movement detection task. Now another thing is trying to test concurrent validity, meaning that we developed a new test for it to be better than the previous one, so we had to show this. So we compared the results uh, to what the UFO would have done, and also tried to see if we were consistent with uh, what was happening on the simulator. So does it correlate to more realistic environments, driving environments, such as on the simulator? Uh, for the UFO part, we actually uh, tested uh, 163 senior drivers who were voluntarily attending uh, a course, an updating course on driving security rules and also practice. And then we compared it to four different um, other indicators which were age, cognitive impairment, attention shift and on-road on -road test. So what we can see from this graph is um, that we have a linear uh, correlation to age from 70 years upwards. Uh, the left scale is on a log scale, so actually if you look it up, people from 85 to 90 are, are more than twice as slow than people from 70 to 74 on average. What's very interesting is um, if we look at the R2, uh, which is the coefficient of determination, this means that 14.3% of the variance of our instrument could be explained by age differences. Um, compared to the UFOV, UFOV had only a 4% explanation, so we our instrument actually models age better than, than the UFOV does. When we're comparing this to the cognitive decline, well, we actually use the MOCA, the Monorail Cognitive Assessment, uh, which can class people in three different groups, no cognitive impairment, mild cognitive impairment, and severe cognitive impairment. Again, we have a linear association, 11.7% of the variance of our measurements was, ex was explained by the, the degree of cognitive decline, whereas for the UFO, we only had 1.6% that was explained. Attention shift, we use the trial making task, the part B, and then again, here we can see 9.9 uh, .9 explanation from the TMTB uh, over our measurements, which was better than for the UFO. Now for the on-road test, well this is 
anyone that's worked in the field will tell you that it's so much so difficult to actually associate um, cognitive tests to what is actually happening on the road. Uh, we confirm this uh, with our low sample of 141 drivers for which we had the road assessment. Uh, our R2 is only of 1.5%, which is rather low. It's not significant with a P of um, 0 0.14. However, it is still higher than for the UFOB. And by increasing the sample size, uh, we might start showing a, a slight difference. Um, this is quite rele relevant to what we can see in the literature. And, and even if this appears disappointing, we're, qu we're quite happy with these results. How about on the simulator? Well, the simulator was... Um, and we used again the 20 young young drivers who uh, uh, took alcohol, uh, alcohol and then drove on the simulator. We had three tasks, one simple one where it was simply driving on a straight road and we were measuring lateral deviation, so swerving on the road. And then we did a double task where people actually had to maintain a distance to a car that was in front of them. And did a triple task by having uh, crosses appear on the left on the right side of the screen and they actually had to activate the blinker on the side where the cross would appear. What was very interesting uh, during this task is that what we saw is that even in the simple task we had associations between our cognitive measurements and the swerving on the road. However, the more complex the task became, the more this, um, these measurements actually correlated uh, to what was happening on the simulator. This is mainly related um, to a workload effect that if people if, we, if the task is too simple, they can actually have a margin, and even if we provide them with alcohol, well, their driving abilities is still maintained. Whereas if we have a, a, a more complex task, well, things start to appear, and we can actually measure them better with what we've done with our tests. Content validity. This is more like on the conceptual way, um, combining these tests, does it make sense? Are they measuring similar things, and was it sensible to do so? Uh, we had a panel of experts before developing the instruments that actually provided input uh, to focus on the appropriate test, but was this done appropriately? So to do this, we ran confirma confirmatory um, factorial analy analysis, including all forms, all the indicators that we initially had uh, measured. After the 104 senior, we had two indicators. First of all, um, top-down mechanisms uh, regulating attention. Uh, were actually increased with senior drivers. Uh, this has been shown also um, in the literature and therefore not correlated with unfitness to drive related to age. So this concerns mainly alerting gain and orientation gain, which are maintained all, all through our lives. The other thing was about the spatial decay measurement, which we did not observe, um, both in the senior population uh, except for people with severe cognitive impairment. So the first analysis was done putting them all together where we can see the model doesn't fit as well as expected knowing the, these factors. And the modified model on the right is removing these three factors where we have really a, um, uh, a close to perfect model um, with an RMSEA of uh, 0, uh, SRMR of 0 0.039 uh, and a CD of 0 0.72. If we look at the factorial design, we can see that each of our factors is actually correlated to cognitive fit fitness, and more moreover, there's no other pathway, so they're actually each of them explains a part that is not explained by one of the other functions. So they're quite complementary one from another, and uh, have an overall package. This is quite important if we're considering testing effects of drugs on senior drivers or so on, because we have a tool that can actually uh, detect uh, nearly any factor that could actually um, modify the cognitive fitness. So once we know all this, what are the perspective? Well, one thing for sure is that we're really moving forwards to modeling brain processes during driving and there's a hope um, that we can actually try and have a better insight on how does a brain function well and, and what effects and what measurements can actually uh, let us see what's going on in that. Um, also, the use of, uh, of personal computers today has made this accessible uh, to clinical settings. However, um, the human being always has different types of uh, adaptive behavior concerning compensation strategies and, and way of compensating uh, loss of functions. And for now, we don't believe that instruments will be able to 
put forward a threshold uh, for bidding driving from a certain point, but will provide an overall view and will really help uh, experts and clinicians provide an input and also um, document their belief that people should cease driving. The advantages of MedDrive compared to other instruments is that it's conceptually sound, it's transparent, um, all the recordings and the way of doing it are available. Also our measurements correlate to driving performance, this is very important for, for, future, for the future. And for the moment it's really fit for research, both for senior drivers but also uh, for testing drugs. The limitations. Well, if you do all the tests um, and you have someone that has some difficulties understanding instructions, uh, this might require up to 45 minutes, which is difficult to plan in clinical settings. So this means that these tests should be included in a broader decision procedure uh, with uh, certain lights that say, well, now it's time <coughs> to check these different measurements. The other point is that we don't have population standard values for the moment. Our sample size is quite low. We only have about 150 people. The idea is to collect data also for people between 30 um, and 70. And this way we'll have a, a much better idea of, of cognitive decline regarding these functions and also provide uh, informations, future information for clinicians, with, which is age-equivalent age results. The last point is that we haven't got measurements for driving difficulties, meaning to what point do we predict events on the road. This seems very important but requires very large sample size and is yet to come. So what do we do from here on? Well, the idea is that uh, any uh, team that requires the instrument or would like to use it for, for their own purpose are welcome to do so. They can contact us and we will make it available to them um, with, our, with our entire support. and. If each team provides some information about their proper re the, the results um, and also on neutral conditions so we can have standard values, these can be then inputted into the system and help us afterwards improve it and also have standard values uh, for, for different types of populations. So please feel welcome to contact us. There's an internet page uh, providing further information on the instrument. You can, join, you can see it at www.meddrive.org. And also, please feel free to send us back comments um, on the instrument, the instructions, or any input that can help improve uh, MedDrive.